What's up everybody? Brett here. Back today playing some more Total War Warhammer 2 Vortex campaign action with your boy Marcus Wolfhart. And I just wanted to show you guys this. I saw this a second ago as I was kind of going through everything to make sure I knew uh, what I was going to be doing today. And I saw this. Peasant. Income from all buildings plus 1%. It's hilarious. But look at the, look at the, the text. It says, ooh, master, there's some lovely filth over here. Straight out of Monty Python, the Holy Grail. That made me, that made me laugh. That's like the best scene in the whole movie, where the peasants argue about what kind of, uh, what kind of government they have. It's hilarious. And I saw here also we have Spawn Killer. It would seem that the Lizard King can't always do everything. Winning, for instance, defeated Lord Mazdamudi. You get a leadership aura size plus twenty five percent, which is great if you start getting things like Inspiring Presence, and you also pick up Brass Lung. I don't know if it affects hold the line. I don't think it does. But you can really apply your leadership buff over your entire front line with that type of uh, AoE. It's pretty sweet. But anyway, guys, we've got some serious cash right now. We're doing okay. We're about to fight Gentleman Jenkins, whose army I don't really remember. Uh, he's one of those rogue armies. Let's just get to doing that right away. Hopefully he can't run away fast. Okay. I mean, he's got cannons, he's got mortars. It is a thing in the Empire that you can capture siege equipment. Not siege equipment, but artillery pieces, rather. Um, but I think you have to have an open slot in your the army. Empire. And it's so rare, it rarely happens, but I would love to pick up a great cannon for Fight free. With clout, comrades. So obviously their, their army is not as strong as ours. But they do have an annoying army. They have lots of range and artillery. This is the Battle of Sea of Serpents. So it's going to be a different map. I want to show you guys as many maps, as many as many interactions as possible in this playthrough. I will say though that there is something else I wanted to talk about, which is... Like just how weird our playthrough currently is. And that Nakai basically can't even hurt us. We made peace with him early on. We've already killed Mazda Mundi. Uh, although I'm sure he'll be back since we can't really squash. Uh, his, you know, his home base is still, you know, very much intact. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna deploy up here. I don't like being behind these rock these uh these trees though. Let's see if we can't do something a little more. Yeah, and as soon as we deploy, we can see like their whole their whole crew. Move up to here. Yes, we'll be taking, no doubt, some um, some fire from cannons and mortars and things like that. We don't we don't need to worry about it. We'll just move up as quickly as we can with our cav. We'll bring them over here to the left so that they can reinforce us uh, asap. These two guys just struggle to find a place, but we'll just we'll keep them in the center here. Ready. And then our one wagon to the emperor. To the emperor. All right. Yeah, let's just start it up. Oh, where is it? Very well. Did it show me the wrong thing? It sure did. Pretty sure I hit one. There we go. Bring up our entire front line just like that. And yeah, we want to be crushing anything they have that has some range. Take them out of here. Use her for that. We can take a few casualties. It's not a huge deal. Yeah, they're just getting smashed. Very good. You guys can come up too. Uh, yeah, I might be a little rusty, guys. But I'm mostly... I'm thinking about campaign-related stuff. And like I said, just how strange our campaign has really become. See if we can put some damage on this, on this general. Wow. Alright, and let's get him with one of these focus shots. There's no one here. Come on, Marcus. He didn't shoot it. 
Okay, I guess it was because they're still in skirmish mode, which I don't don't enjoy. Yeah, let's get in there. You guys there, you guys here, y'all here. Once we smash these swordsmen with the Reich's Guard, we'll be able to push on through. So let's do some of this, some of that. You guys really do need to be in skirmish mode. If I'm if I'm feeling like my micro is a little bit off today, then y'all y'all gotta be in skirmish mode. And there they go. Well, let's go ahead and shut down these uh these artillery pieces. Shut them down on the charge. Let's go. This will be over quickly. Only using about half of my uh, my potential here. Run, guys! What are you doing? Sometimes skirmish mode just really doesn't do anything, which is why I don't I don't really like to use it. You either gotta be in skirmish mode from the beginning of the battle, or you gotta change it up. Let's get in there. And there we go. We should get the, the mass shatter in a second here. Well, gentlemen Jenkins, I'm sorry to say, I didn't have to, I barely even had to play. I'm leaning back, I'm chilling. And we smashed them. And because we're at sea, I'm pretty sure they're just dead. It's been a while since I had to take like a, a sea battle. But I don't think there's any running from a sea battle. How sweet would it be if it gave us the option to get this cannon? I would probably drop the war wagon in exchange for a cannon, maybe even a mortar. Well done, comrades. I've no time for human baggage. Today, you live. He says a lot of stuff after he wins. Okay, they do get to run, so maybe I should have stuck around for a second and kept killing them. But we've unlocked the regiments of renown, the silver bullet handgunners. One of the best regiments, maybe in the game. Uh, we've also unlocked the white wolves huntsmen, which is cool. If we want to be super consistent, we should dump this war wagon. As much as I've loved playing with it, um, I would like to make another army. A third army, perhaps this episode maybe next episode i don't know if we're quite there yet financially uh but to make a third army and have it be just filled with war wagons and, and a build that like focuses on using them what i think what i'm going to do now is we're going to get rid of our war wagon By the Emperor's authority. we're going to do it right away simply because it's 242 you know upkeep and we're going to pick up once we land again we're going to pick up uh the white wolves and that'll make this this army really consistent All right, and here we go. We want some of these abilities. So, sleight of hand, yeah. If we're if we're going to make this a pretty heavy huntsman army. Oh, and I have to remember we have the ability to vanguard deploy. I totally forgot about that. We could have deployed it completely in their faces. Oh my gosh, I'm sure somebody out there was yelling at me. We could have deployed right on top of them with our halberds and, and great swords. That would have been that would have been good. I regret not having done that. Okay, so training becomes less important uh, the more experienced our forces are. Let's go for a wound maker. So right now everyone's already got a gold chevron, so there's no point in further boosting our training. I'm expecting a huge yeah balance of power shift so we don't Let's we can just auto resolve this, this thankfully save some time move on I've no time for human how much gold are you gonna give it oh man 2k this was an incredibly lucrative series of fights for us we destroyed their faction we're no longer at war with them but our imperial supplies are ready oh and that put us in huge hostility See, that's the real negative. The lords and nobles of the home states are mightily impressed by your advancement of the imperial cause overseas. 
They are therefore helping to fund the training of better quality troops to dispatch to the expedition. The four main divisions of the Empire's military each has a package ready. Choose which shipment you like to receive. Okay. Three halberdiers, three huntsmen, one great swords. We've kind of done that one a few times. Two Reichsguard, one Demigriff. I like this one a lot because we're, we're so far away from getting those types of units. One great cannon, which I like. Two outriders. One Hellstorm rocket battery. I want that rocket battery. I like the grenade launcher outriders too. They're a fun unit. And this gives me a steam tank. Yep. Ca I'll just casually take the steam tank this time, guys. We gotta, we gotta get a steam tank in here somewhere. I'm not sure what I cut for a steam tank, especially in this army, uh, which is where I would like to put them. But I may just put them in my secondary army. The expedition's relentless aggressions have caused hostility to rise to deadly levels. The enemy are now concentrating their military resources against you. Emergency Imperial supplies have already been dispatched. And we're going to pick up another halberdier and two handgunners from our tech tree, which is awesome. And the children, of course, yeah, they're, they're getting ready for counter-offensives. Oh, this time they brought a real army. Okay. All right, we picked up some nice traits on Marcus as well. And I think now we have the gold we needed. We talked about getting the blacksmith here. It's 4K. Uh, but we need to get back to dry land, which I think we can do. Yeah, we need to go We need to go in a that early type direction. We can hold off for a turn on getting the white wolves. There's no reason for us to incur that type of income penalty. But where these things are... They're super close to us, with what appears to be a pretty decent stack. I don't know if they'll get to me this turn, but we are a little bit hurt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fall back to the Temple of Kara, and we're going to see where they go. We're going to watch them with interest. That way, next turn, all I have to do is pop in. I mean, I could just pop in several units, and it would be fine. We'll probably also dismiss. Let's take a real tally. So... Would love to get these war wagons in here, and I think I will. Handgunners, halberds. So I'm looking at at least five more units. I could get rid of these two spears, which I think I'm going to do right away. That way I don't have to pay for them this turn. And then if I'm also going to bring in Sigmar Sons. And the Silver Bullets. Go ahead and merge them. That should make two. Sure. Do I want the Sterling's Revenge? I do. These guys are beastly. They're a really powerful unit. But I don't think I have room for them quite yet. We'll put them in another another army that we make. Maybe one that's kind of uh, uniquely in a position to use. Their types of units. Because I do like using them. They're one of my favorite units on the Empire roster. For their versatility. I, I love using them. Here, let's let's hold off. Let's keep some of this gold intact for other turns. Income from trade, additional tradable resources. So I want to get this. York is a highly skilled engineer capable of seeking out and making the best use of the resources available to him. Let's look at our income from trade and see how much that affects us. Our income from trade is really low. I mean, it's 214. We're going to get that because it's an, it's an amazing ability and maybe in the future it'll be better. Yeah, it, I mean, it barely made any difference at all. And part of that's because we're not making a ton of tradable resources. And part of that is because we're not trading with almost anyone. Yeah, let's go ahead and get Endurance as well. When it comes to the Art of Survival, there is no one who can match Kalara's finely honed abilities. Reduces our attrition, which hasn't been an issue yet, but will be once we, we walk into Vampire Lands. And Ambush Defense Chance is cool. With, with her plus Marcus... It basically means we'll never be ambushed. Which I wasn't terribly concerned about in the first place. Okay, we can buff up our assassinate to the best levels. We should have an amazing chance to assassinate anybody we want at this point. And yeah, we're going to hold on to the gold because we're going to need it next turn to to buy the units that we that we want. Oh yeah, and because our 
our condemn level went up higher, Spectazuma is now even closer to getting that next tier of uh, public order penalties. So they will be receiving a uh, an army any any day now. Luckily for us, we're securing Pahuax quickly. So they'll have a sizable garrison by the time that becomes an issue. And Flaxlon is still in the positive, thankfully, because we have this army here. Even though they're being besieged by this tiny Lizardman force. Okay. Now it's going to take five turns for this to go down. What was I looking at? So let's just quickly see at what rank 20. So we need to get up to 20 and then we get the Tattersouls and the Zintler's Reichsguard. Marcus is at level 16. Okay. Yeah, we'll just skip that and let's let's go ahead with our turns. We'll we'll look to see about trade and stuff next turn. We'll check our uh, our diplomacy. So I had started to say during the battle that our campaign is weird, that the fact that Nakai is a non-threat has become strange. The fact that you know the Vampire Coast and other Lizardmen forces were basically neutralized themselves through wars with the Skaven and, and other factions, uh, the Norskins. That's so strange that it allowed us to take out what is probably one of our realest threats at this point in the campaign, which is the Blue Vipers. You know, we did that, and now we're in this, this position where we're able to kind of rapidly uh, grow stronger. Okay, let's do what we're going to do. I mean, that's huge. That cuts down pretty heavily on our... Yep, we want to pick up one more unit. We know we can afford the White Wolves here. They're super cheap in his army, which is nice. Let's move forward a little bit and see if we can scout out where that big army is. Because it, it may still be somewhere down here. And what I would like to do is just get Marcus inside of Tlaxlon. Because it's a nice, like, striking point. We'll level up our boy Conroy here. We'll give him hold the line. I'm going to skip the Warhorse and go straight to the... Well, actually, maybe the Imperial Pegasus. I like the Barded Warhorse, though. For the armor and the HP. Hmm, what are we leveling here? Perhaps Floating Pyramid. I want to level whatever I think is the most likely to get attacked. And Floating Pyramid is just kind of like... they're. I mean, they're all pretty likely to get attacked, to be real. We almost have enough income to completely cover our expenditures here. If we buy if we buy the silver bullets, though, if we hire them, we're going to be in the black and we're going to be at like zero gold. So we don't want that to happen. Yeah, here they are. Okay. We've got a pretty tough force, though. Our front line's a little weak, but look at our hand gunners. We've got mortars. And our steam tank is just going to hang out. Until we have the, the appropriate, you know, force to, to apply it with. Let's check our diplomacy. Vendors of the Great Plan still alive and kicking. I bet we could make a pact with Hexoidal. No? Really? Okay. They still think they're the, sh they're the shit. <laughs> but they're, uh, they're not. Let me get wrecked. Really wish that they would break ties there. Are the dwarves? No, the dwarves are still Onward. still good. We're just not close enough with them to trade. And unfortunately, we can kind of see Teclas on the map, but we can't really see him on the map, which is very annoying. We can see his, his, his stuff right here. Would love to trade with him if he's friendly. And I know Kalita's down there too if she's still alive. Okay. Well, what we can do right now is we can camp. We can give ourselves plus melee defense and leadership if they choose to attack this stack this turn. Which they might. Uh, I mean, that's what they're here for. Who knows where they're going to go. If we can win that battle, we can perhaps get over to Spectazuma quickly. And, you know, perhaps save it from having to go through the, the full terrors of a siege. Alright, let's see what we got. But I will say one of the most annoying things about this playthrough so far, and it's not so, I mean, that's kind of a, a harsh way to phrase it, but one of the big 
pluses that I was so excited to do this siege because uh, this this campaign because of were the empire like dilemmas where you choose a, a particular elector count and you know they they send you the unique knights and all the different stuff like we haven't done any of that yet and we do have I forget what the name of this faction is the sentinels yes okay they have risen up the sword of Cain has been claimed again you could probably kill these guys nice and of course we're just gonna auto resolve this mission accomplished today you live Happy to pick up another thousand gold. We needed that. The Emperor grants this pardon. Nice. I am the hunt master. All right, that's yet another enemy. Wow, look at all the junk we picked up. That's yet another enemy down, and another stack down for Hexoatl. Entertainer, cool. Good stuff. Champion of the faith. Is he full? He is. Okay. So with that much gold, I feel safe. I feel comfortable. Man, see how much this is? This is 600 in upkeep. And we're going to drop below, but I think we're going to smash this army. Yeah, I mean, they have... It's their front line that would be scary. Like, if a lot of these were Soros, we would get overwhelmed quickly. But I think if we if we play appropriately with our handgunners, we should be able to take this handily. Unintended. And they're gonna have to come to us because we have our war wagons with mortars, which we haven't seen yet. So I'm I'm hyped I'm hyped to uh to experience that. I used them once in a multiplayer battle that I posted on my channel to pretty great effect, and that was against a a good player who was using, you know, high elf counter artillery. So. Let's see how it goes. A lot of terrain here. And not good terrain either. Because when you've got handgunners, you need a certain type of terrain to make it work. If you've got arch, all you have is archers. I mean, you can just keep them up here and you're fine. But this type of terrain is a little rough. This low ground stuff. Yeah, we're going to have to be... A little particular about it. We'll deploy what you know what we have, and then we'll we'll figure out the formation around hand around the hand gunners. Ready so they're the most important thing. We'll stagger them a little bit. Keep them in this boxy looking formations because it allows them to turn better. Uh, the enemy has no artillery. Uh, the worst thing that they can do is probably drop rocks on us with the pterodons. Um, but this will allow them to turn and fire and, and aid each other. Our front line is pretty meager. But Sigmar's sons are unbreakable. That's, if you've never seen them before, we can kind of check them out. They're just a unique color scheme having swordsman unit that, that are unbreakable. And of course, they're a rank 9 swordsman. So they have good stats. They're really, they're really fine. They're an okay unit. And we'll use this extra halberd. To potentially screen right there. Now these guys can both Vanguard deploy in a sneaky position, but I don't want to risk losing them. Let's say they just they see them and then they just turn around and, and get me. Like that's no good. So there we go. Wasn't letting me uh ult click for a second there. Get our halberdiers a little bit further out. So what you want to do when you've got handgunners? is make like make areas from which you can shoot through the formations now we're a bit cramped here because of the terrain but normally i would make almost like uh like portholes from which you can shoot through so if we put them here we know we can shoot there and we can shoot there it's kind of the general idea where are the silver okay they're they're our most expensive and most dangerous unit. They're also basically invisible, which is kind of their big thing. 
They have, uh, they have stalked. Okay. And we will put these guys here. Archers. Nah, that sucks. This kind of sucks, but the huntsmen are going to be here to, to kill any large targets. And the archers are going to be here to try and protect them from... From the pterodons that we know are coming. Okay. We need these two to anchor our front line. And thankfully we do also have our witch hunter here. Who's going to be lowering the missile resistance of a particular target. And it's armor. Which is important. And then we'll be able to shoot it to pieces. Whatever it is. If we use aqua accusation and then shoot it with the hand gunners. They are going to, they're going to fall. Scoot up a bit so we can get those those shots. And let's start the battle. Wish me luck, guys. Start taking out those Saurus. And for a moment here, we'll get a little cinematic greedy. Nice. That was beautiful. And we'll watch them fire. They miss everything. Shoot. Not a single kill yet. Huh. Just because they're moving forward. Are they dodging? The AI got like a weird buff in the past. I should have just kept them in the back as artillery. They would have come to me anyway. Uh, in the back, the AI got like this weird buff where they started dodging literally everything. It was ex it was terrible. It was I mean, it was a horrible thing. You'd play as like... Um, the dwarves in the greenskin campaign and you could not with the with the grudge throwers you couldn't hit anything it was miserable because the the greenskins would just dance all the way to the front lines and you wouldn't get any kills no 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 nope we're gonna come here come here yes please Burst them down. We don't need Croxagores. If the Croxagores make it in, we're just like screwed. Gotta get them in. Get in there. Stop the charges. Croxagores are going down. That's good. Get rid of this Carnosaur too. Jesus. Let's use our mortars on the static chameleon skinks. We'll weaken their lord. We'll shoot into there. These handgunners need to pull back. Come on guys, hold them up. Oh my gosh, are these the invult like the uh, unbreakable guys? Oh no. Well, this fight could end up being a lot more difficult than I originally anticipated. Because now that I'm remembering, we need to actually kill them. Everything on the on the field right now is unbreakable. Oh, that's awful. How birds, where'd you go? Well, we're kind of screwed here now. Oh, Jesus. Get them out of the sky. Let's go. Okay, okay. Not, not the worst. Need you guys to come back. Shoot those. Save our captain. Mortars are now hitting appropriate targets. The cab is dying. Pull them out. Hand gunners come out. Of course, we're getting charged in the back. 
All right, at least they're they're on the appropriate targets. Get rid of these fire leak bolas. My poor captain, fighting an unbreakable foe. Man, I totally forgot about that. That makes these things so much more dangerous. Alright, get in there, buddy. Now. We obey. Find your target. Oh, shoot them. We the fact that these are chameleon skinks is also annoying. Pick them off. Unbreakable Someone little missile shooting buggers. I will say our handgunner lines have been very effective, but gods, I wish I had not forgotten that they were unbreakable. It's horrible. The Empire endures. No, you run, man. You've done your job. You're free to go. As you say. Very well. The Heldenhammer. Taking aim. Yes, General. Try and route what we can. I don't think our, our war wagons can function in any other way right now but as perhaps weak chariots. And damage sponges. No, no, no. Let's make some uh, lines of sight so we can shoot. There's not much left, but man, we took a beating. Our front line held admirably considering how small it was. And they're shutting down kind of all the key targets right now. They're dying. The Lord is dead, thank goodness. You guys just keep running back. Get our Lord in here, finishing them off. Try not to shoot ourselves to death. And here we go. How many left? Fifteen. You gotta love all the crossfire we've got going on. It's pretty sweet. Jesus. Okay. I can dig it. And the war wagons ultimately got their value. I mean, we had them shooting into those blobs of Saurus. That's not, I mean, that's not a bad number of kills, considering the awkwardness of our original uh, couple shots. Yeah, you just kind of want to use them as normal mortars, I think, with shorter range that can reposition easily if you should you need them to and the sons of the sigmar sons they fought to the last man in that battle and died that's that's something I go where I am needed. faction destroyed right as they spawn we kill them and i think we can move forward and take these dudes on as well let's make that happen and now we have the cash to pump that up. But what I really wanted to do was to... Oh yeah, Marcus level. Was to come down here and finally get that... That bit of land back under my control. Get telescopic aim. Deprive them of their eyes and they cannot shoot back. Armor sundering attacks is going to be really good if we want to snipe anyone. Which seems like kind of his whole deal. You know what, let's let's send Marcus back over here. Let's start conquering this land. We have lots of quests to go in that direction. And maybe we move Aldebrass up. Because to be honest, that, that position in the north is definitely more of a uh, defensive position. Man, we really, we have to... We have to get to the upkeep reduction costs. Like, we, we have to. This army is too expensive right now um yeah we can beat a couple skinks we just can't engage with our front line at all we're not going to auto resolve because it'll kill off half our army 
But it's nice to get these these battles out of the way while while our hostility level is maxed out. And it's currently on the decline. So if we were, you know, if it had just finished it as starting from zero, at this point, you know, taking three battles in like a single turn, uh, we would be pushing it pretty close to its limits, I think. Front line that we're not going to use. Sterling's Revenge. Sterling's Revenge will be our front line. Hand gunners. Show us the foe. Hand gunners. Hand gunners will be our real front line. Sterling's Revenge. Something Watch like out. this. By Ulrich's and we're going to just gun them down. At your service. From here, Slay the heretics. get that guy up in the front. Up. Our lord is, is healthy enough that he can uh, make a blob around himself and shoot him. And let him get shot, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, the only real problem is that, yeah, we don't... Let's back up. Let's back up. So we'll back all the way up. This little hill right here, you can see that we can't really see who's coming. But this is actually nice because we're at kind of like the bottom of a slope. It's very subtle. But it, if your hand gunners can't shoot down at a particular angle, shooting up is kind of the next best thing. Flat and up. So maybe about here is better. We're getting into like super minutia here, but this could make the difference between us having a line of sight and us not. So yeah, as they kind of approach this ridge, we'll be shooting up and over, which is nice. All right, that's good enough. Let him come. Of Sigma. And as much as I wanted that barded warhorse for Aldebrass here, as you say. see where the limit of my range is. Yeah, we want him Let's out delay. kind of by the, the very tip of the range. But still close enough that we could support him if we needed to. And the mortars are starting to shoot. See how they do. They've got their shields raised. Oh god, devastating. That was brutal. They're all skinked, so there's really no point in changing targets. We just want to shoot at whoever, whoever's in the middle. That way if we miss, perhaps we hit some of the guys standing next to them. Oh jeez, just like that. Mortars, guys. Don't sleep on mortars. 71 kills. 71. That was only two volleys. We'll back up a little. Gosh. You know, let's shoot here. Yeah, and here come the hand gunner. Fire. It's unbelievable. Move back a little bit more. Sterling's Revenge will start shooting soon. Huntsmen are shooting. Oh, they're blobbed up so heavily. Get in there, guys. Oh, you? Turn that off. Yeah, and some of this is just like we're going to have to fight it a bit. And those that are free, for instance, our archers, they need to help. Yeah, they can keep shooting or tear them up. Mortars can keep routing them off. Let's get his weapon strength as, you know, in there. Dealing some, dealing some damage. Shoot it up, homies. Let's go. Oh, no. That mortar round right into our own backs. Alright, we're running. We just wanted to kind of post up behind them and shoot them in the back. 
And there we go. We just we just needed to uh, to break that old blood a little bit. Hundred kills on the Sterlings. That was fun, and it felt felt pretty good. Two hundred and sixty six kills on the war wagon. Yep. <laughs> yep. I like that. Already getting up them gold chevrons. They started up with some with some chevrons, of course. But they're getting up there. We're going to make a little bit of gold off of this fight. Not too much, though. My journey begins. And we can't reach them. Cast evil out. Can't reach them right now. But we'll get them next turn. Our income is low, but yeah, we need to come down here and take take this place. We need to secure this province, get our income back on track. Maybe we can rely on our ally to help protect this land for us. I don't know about that, though. I want to get as many levels on Outer Brass as we can. So we can get to that upkeep reduction. Which is really going to make a difference, guys. It's 15% when we're talking thousands. So, I mean, even if it all it gives us is an extra 300, 400 gold per turn, that'll put us back in the black. Alright, he just recruited a bunch of heroes is what it looks like. And he's giving me vision of Hexoatl, which is great. Because that lets me see where their armies are. I don't know who he's fighting right now. Yeah, we, we could have used this a while back, but we'll see who is the fool. Give ourselves some leadership. I'll take that. But what I want, guys, is Empire Dilemmas. I want to be able to, to choose which which faction I support. Ooh, man. If they crush this area, Mazdamundi's back. Of course he is. Uh, but if they they'd smash Hexawaddle, which I don't think they can do. It's a rank 4. The garrison here is just sick. For the AI to deal with, I just don't think they can do it. But I would love to see Skeggy start to just raffle stomp through Mazdamundi's lands. That would be pretty helpful for my designs. And I wanted to build this as if I were building out Reichland, right? So I don't want to put just a bunch of weaving houses here. I want to actually make real infrastructure. So I want to make like uh, stables. I want to make uh, you know, my own Wizard's Conclave here, and those types of things. A Wizard's Conclave is done, actually, down here. And we have what we need to upgrade this, but we just don't have the gold. Oh, man, I want a wizard. I need a wizard, Harry. Who would I toss for a wizard in this army? Probably a handgunner. Or maybe our, our lone huntsman. Not sure. But we are... We are certainly missing... Let's get scavenge. We're certainly missing um, that magic element to this playthrough so far. Alright. Yeah, and he recruited a bunch of new units. How dare you. I'm going to quick save this, and I'm going to auto-resolve because I don't feel like fighting this again. But if it kills off a bunch of my swordsmen... Okay. I was going to say, then we're going to reload and do it again. Because with this type of army, we shouldn't have any problems. Potion of Strength. That's a nice one to pick up on him because his armor piercing is pretty low. Weapon damage is pretty low as well. This will let him duel just about any lord. I don't know if it'll let him fight dudes like Gator again. We saw what happened last time. Gator, uh, spun to win all over him. Campaign movement range plus 8. That is something that we want. Okay, it looks like it's probably just a hero Loyal thing. Not, fight. And wound recovery time is much more important in this stack, because that's where we've got all of our heroes. Yeah, campaign movement range plus 10%, plus 8%, plus Yorick's got, uh, you know, get increased mobility, which we're going to max out next turn. That's another 5%, so that's 15 then Marcus, of course, 
has Captain of uh, is it Captain of Scouts? I, I thought he had another one that gave him increased stuff. If we want to go even more, we can basically keep ourselves in. Uh, we could keep ourselves in Force March stance, and you'll end up getting the trait. I think it's Route Marcher. Anyway, our campaign movement range is is awesome, and it needs to be awesome because man, we've got a long way to go. Did he block us? Because we could kill this thing. If he gets close to me again, we're gonna use Hurtwick to assassinate him. Next turn, we're gonna we're gonna take this, but we need to make sure we have the gold to do that. Champion of the faith. Come in here. We'll get irrepressible now, and then we could start getting that Lord Master or Quartermaster that we need. And you, buddy, let's just keep getting you armor. Armor is definitely the key in, in surviving battles with the Lizardmen. Sadly, we don't have gold to make much use of anything else down here. At least this is upgrading. Give it a bit of a stronger garrison. We could come down here and find fresh enemies to fight. Let's go see what's up. Go see what's up. We might find allies, we might find enemies. But these are probably Skaven controlled. But if they're not, I mean, I wouldn't mind having these. It puts us close to some of our Lizardmen opponents. But I think there's, these are all Skaven controlled. And we're not at war with any Skaven yet, I don't believe. Okay, what do we get from here? Missile damage, reload time reduction. I like this one. But I think we're going to go for the Engineer's Guild. Being able to share acquired knowledge among your peers can only lead to better results all around. Uh, that should... I think it'll bring these down to like sixes. I don't know if it'll bring these down to fours. We'll be at 120%. Uh, but if it does, imagine that extrapolated over an entire campaign where you're trying to complete that tree. And you can see the advantage of that. Okay. We're going to get a rebellion here next turn. We're not going to be able to do anything about that at all. They're gonna, we're going to have to beat it with our garrison. But with this strong of a garrison, I don't see how we lose. We just won't. We've even got the Bright Wizard in there now to help us out cast fireballs or whatever. Anything else we can do this turn? I, I don't think so. All right, let's roll out. And here we go. The rebellion's actually probably a good thing because I, I wouldn't be surprised if they make us a good bit of money in the end. They're going to besiege our, our city. They're going to get up to a full stack first, which takes a few turns. Then they're going to, you know, siege us, which will take another few turns while they build up siege equipment. And then we beat them and we get thousands of gold. So that's kind of the, the process that usually takes place if you can win your siege. Um, I just, I don't see myself losing that. That's a pretty strong area there. So we have negative growth and Pahuax. Which is okay because I can't even afford to keep up with the, uh, the production and stuff there. Oh man, we might have to, we might have to dump something. Because if I'm going to take this place, which is something I want to do right now. Uh, yeah, to colonize is going to put us pretty low. We could search the ruins first and hope to get paid, but I've failed pretty much all of these because I, I don't know the secrets to a lot of these things. These Lizardmen games. So let's just colonize. On the hunt. It's going to hurt. Saved is his name. Okay. What are you doing? Alright, we discovered them. But there's such a small rogue army that I don't think we can really... We can't make use of them and, and crushing them isn't really important. What we need is... To get rid of some units. And the only place I can see us getting rid of units is going to be an Aldebrass's crew. But what do we dump? 
I mean, these these things are super expensive, but I don't want to get rid of those. Um, I could see getting rid of two handgunners. That puts us. That's not even. That's not even enough either. Hmm. We need more gold. Let's. For the short term, let's check this out. You can sometimes ask your allies for gold. I don't think the dwarves are going to give it to us. No. But. Our buddies of the New World Colonies, we haven't asked them in a minute. They'll probably give us 600. That's usually what I ask for at this point in the game. Yeah. And they certainly do. So that 600 helps. I mean, that puts us back in black here. This, this land will generate income, and once we can, you know, get the timber and things that's more trade, that's more gold, we'll be able to stabilize, but we're just that little bit too far away right now from it. Also, growth, not really necessary. Trade income is terrible. Let's go for tax rate, and let's also go for tax rate here. We probably should have switched some of these over a while ago. And because we don't need growth here, let's go for tax rate there as well. And that should switch some of this up. I mean, this should this should go up pretty mightily next turn, but it won't go into effect until next turn. Protector of the weak. Uh, I'm going to feel really dumb if we don't get rid of some of these units, but I'm going to hold off one more turn. We're not negative yet, and I might need this army to fight some sort of Skaven or something like that that's here. Let's wait. The right of Sotek has been performed by Hexuado. So if we go into their lands, we'll suffer attrition. They're probably doing that to kind of fight off Norska right now. Oh, these Dark Elves down here have been destroyed. I'm pretty sure those are the guys who are in the bottom. The bottom left corner down here. They're kind of like Teclis' rival. We've encountered the Exiles of Nehek. I think, I think our ally has encountered them, and because we're allies with them, we can see them. And the hostility dissipates, which is good. Public order back to normal. No more super public order penalties. Hopefully this dude is not, um... Yeah, they're raiding. They're taking some income from us. He's building cav. Good. Build more cav before you siege me, buddy. That's a that's a good that's a pro strat. This will be done next turn. Let's see what's here. It's gonna be a giant scaven wall. No. Okay, so let's search the ruins. Maybe we can not fail. It's Sudoku again. God damn it. Guys, I don't have pen and paper in front of me to do Sudoku. If, if it's if this is easier than that, and I'm just missing it, then I suck. So it says they never like to repeat himself. So there's colors and there's numbers. We're trying to figure out what this one is. So like there's two red, there's two purple, there's not two blue. So I, I feel like color is instantly eliminated. So then I'm thinking it's numbers. So like you can't have, so there's blue, yellow, purple, red. I just want you guys to understand that I understand what this puzzle is. Um, you can't have, so we can't have another red here. And there can't be another one or a three here. So like I get it. This is, this is the red one. This is the blue three. So this will either be a purple four or a yellow two. And this can't be the purple four. Because there's purple on this row. So is this the yellow two? Puzzle failed. See, I probably could have sat and figured that for another minute. That sucks because it might have given us gold. Man, I feel bad because I'm recording this and I'm just like failing at these things. That normally I, I consider myself decent at. I think we should toss the Death Jacks archers because we can always get them back. Yeah. Champion toss those guys the and toss the huntsmen. Awaiting order. 
Okay. And that puts us in the in the black for just long enough to uh to stabilize, hopefully. I would love to get another big shipment. <laughs> Please, Empire. Hook a brother up with some uh with some fat loot. We need a big fight. We need to get some shipwreck treasure. Man, I thought I had that one figured out, but I did not. Yeah, picking up those regiments of renown before that battle. Do I do have the authority to discuss matters? Really messed us up. They want military access with us. Power is everything. Huh. I would love to trade with them. Huh. Weird. They want military access. Man, they won't pay us anything for this. That's very unusual. But if we're going to give someone melee access, then let's make sure that we have a non-aggression pact in place. And in the future, maybe they'll be a source of income for us. If they'll ever capture something that allows them to have a port, we'll be able to trade. Marcus Wolfhart. I mean, we'll come down here and kill this guy just for sheer gold purposes. Let's get increased mobility again. Pump that up. And here... Yeah, just more reload time reduction. Marcus Wolfhart. Declare war. Nah, we don't need to call them to help. You can mess up relations by doing that. Just repeatedly, needlessly calling your allies to help. Let's go! No greater marksman. And uh, they're like they're one of the only real vampire counts type armies we're gonna fight, but they're so weak. We would basically just shoot them to pieces before they got to us. Got so we're just going to auto-resolve. So Normally I like to fight unique armies like this. Today but they really just are pitiful. The Emperor grants this part They're giving us great experience. And, you know, attack a force belonging to the following faction. We've had this one mission forever. We are Honestly, the game is super stalled out for us because this never triggered. And there's nothing we can do about it. The game just bugged out on us. Marcus sadly. Ooh, they own this this area. So I don't really want to take anything that's part of a province. Like, I don't want to own a piece of something. If I'm going to own something, I want to own the whole thing. We could always come over here to Shakwa. Of which it's part of Itza. And Itza, capturing Itza is part of our campaign objective. So we can start moving towards that if we would like. Hmm. We pick up impervious to attack. Let's start going down the red, the red line. We need to start getting uh, pistol court, buffing up our huntsmen even further. Stand your ground would be great, but what we really want to get is sharpshooter too. Turn these dudes into machine guns. That would be nice. And here we can finally get access to wood. It's going to take two turns. That'll give us a little bit of production as well. Because man, I want to colonize this, we just don't have the gold. Hmm. Marcus Wolfhart. Yeah, let's uh Increase the pace. let's about Move face and go this pace. way. This is all taking an interesting turn. Impossible. We may get attacked and serve. defend ourselves next turn. Death to the faithless. And we'll just hang out here. I live to serve the Emperor. It'll get cheaper the more healthy we are. So let's just heal up. 
In two turns, also, we'll finish uh, Yorick's quest. His, uh, one of his monster quests. Or whatever. I don't know. I forget what it's called. One of his hunter quests. So we've got a plan. We just need money. I've been looking at some of the bigger bug the like the the threads revolving around other people in their bug reports. And this is a pretty game breaking one. If it's keep if it's been keeping us this whole time from getting uh you know multiple other quests like reach extremely hostile, reach severely hostile, reach condemned. Like there's thousands of gold that we should have had this campaign that we didn't. And that's not cool. Agreed. Step to it. Time to waste. Man, we have all of this movement, this extra campaign movement, and it's still like impossible for us to go places. Hmm. What would I build here? Probably this. But it doesn't give you gold until you get to the later stages. So I think I'm just going to build the weaving house right now. That's an extra 250 for us. That, that makes your money back real fast. We now have the ability to make Empire Knights. Well, no, we don't. We can't make Empire Knights as of yet. We need the uh, the stables for that. But we can make Halberdiers, and soon we'll be able to have that as well. Let's see what the balance bar tells us. Let's get a good look at their army. They've got a ton of artillery. This is like the worst city-taking army I've ever seen. The mortar will be fine. The hellstorms will do some damage depending on how well the AI uses it. Um, the handgunners and stuff will be useless. We'll be able to shoot them with the towers. The great swords could take the walls from us, but we just have so much. Yeah, they can't. I'm, I'm not worried about this army at all. If they waited and recruited, what are they at? 17 right now. No. If they had like three more great swords, this would be terrifying. Like, they, they could probably get in and over the walls just with sheer great sword brute strength. And it would be much closer. But they just don't have enough to take this from us. So we're actually looking forward to that, that engagement. And we're very close to naturally going back into the black, guys. We're almost there. What we really need is this gem mine shaft. Oh my god. Can we get that this turn? No, we don't want to cancel that. I totally forgot about this. This is a super lucrative thing that we need. And I think our, our changing everything to taxes over growth really helped us out. I think we picked up a couple hundred gold per turn off of that. And certainly now that this is a complete province, we've got some real money to make. We could ride out and meet them and potentially beat them, but I think that's very risky with the amount of artillery they have. That just makes things like their Outriders and their Hellblaster Volley Guns, that puts them in play. Whereas in a siege environment, they're just not. They're just non-factors. Their Reichsguard become viable. Alright, rank gained on, on our boy. And we're in the black. Awesome. They have an army here, but it's not a very strong one. Cross, cross the stream here. This might be the last vestige of power for Hexoato in this, this like southern hemisphere. I think if we if we ruin this place and take it, they're just up here now. Please, please. It'll be a little while before we can, uh, I think before we can milk these dudes for some, some more gold. It takes, it takes several turns for them to recover from that. I know, buddy, I know. Hard being undead, I'm sure. Gold. Gold is our biggest thing right now. So I thought for sure we have access to timber and iron, do we not? 
Do we not have... Oh, the High Sentinel. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot, guys. So we need to upgrade the High Sentinel and make the Iron Mining Pit. They need to be the next ones to go up to level 3. We just don't have the gold. I mean, we're like a few good battles away from having the gold. But we don't have it yet. Okay, one more turn. Well... Uh, uh, kind of an unexpected positive here is that because we haven't fought any battles recently, our hostility level is staying nice and low, so our public order is, is balancing out across our, our domain. So our empire is becoming a much more stable place. And while you're being besieged by, you know, a rebellion, your public order drops by like 20 per turn. So while we were at negative 100, it went down quite a bit, and we're at, you know, minus 49 now. Not possible. Okay, did they recruit some more? They didn't. I think we're going to take that fight, and that'll probably be it for today. I feel like we've been going for quite some time. The Empire. Uh, our buddies are just sitting here dying in attrition. Lord Mazdamundi has managed to make a full stack again. We really want to get this place reinforced if we're not going to have an army there. Yes. Hunt them down. Any last utterances? This should be an incredibly one-sided fight. Fight with clout, comrades. You know what? Let's just let's auto resolve it. Mission accomplished. We could sack them instead of taking it, but this is a territory that I want. Nice superior attacker maxed out. Leadership for our army, leadership aura size when attacking, and melee attack. Very good. And we've taken Shakwa now. Beware the lizard men's champion of Itza, Gorok, the great white lizard sent against us. Add him to your illustrious list of bounties. Oh, God. Forgot about Gorok. He hasn't been in this at all. Picked up a gleaming pendant, which is cool. Our silly level went up one. It's not a... Not a big deal. The Lizardmen retaliate. We killed tons of their stuff, though. We executed multiple times, so we picked up Executioner. That's cool. Where did Gorok go? Down here by Quetza? Okay. Yeah, bring it on, Gorok. Oh, man, that would be sick to fight him next, next episode. That would be cool. Upgrade pistol core. We're gonna get more ammo, more missile damage on our huntsmen. The rumors say that this one is rotten. Deadly onslaught will be a good pickup for him once again. Plus that potion of strength. Actually, he doesn't have the potion of strength. What does he have? The terrifying mask. That'll be a good combo for him. We need so much, y'all. Let's get let's get the gems right off the bat. We really want to upgrade this. To a town but yes this finished so we're making some gold from that we're investing we're back to investing we can also take this as well but we don't have enough to upgrade it uh, I don't think there's anywhere we can draw any money from sadly unless we want to ride out and beat these guys in open field which is very difficult Not impossible, though. I Not impossible. Not. If we could very quickly get onto... We don't have any kind of vanguard deployment type stuff. Never. It would be hard to shut down their artillery. So, we're not going to do that. Once again, siege. So, y'all, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. We made a lot of progress. We kind of picked a direction. Uh, we're going to pick a fight with Gorok. And we're going to try and take Itza from him. But look at the, look at the garrison on this place. 19. That's the biggest garrison I've seen so far, uh, and I'm sure it's ridiculously well defended, but there is a gold mine in Itza that I would love to have. I don't think we get access to a specific location. I think it's only... It might actually be the gold mine that is a specific location. I don't know. But we're, we're taking this province here, or at least we're going to try to. We might even be able to come out here and take these islands. Screw the Dark Elves. I hate those guys. They're like my least favorite dudes in the lore. They're not cool. Torturing people. Yeah, that, that's not my speed. Anyway, 
<laughs> Thanks for watching. Once again, my name is Brett. My channel is Good Talk Gaming. This campaign has been super fun. I hope you're enjoying it. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Take care.